Hello, my name's Guy Armstrong. This is a video to inspire other people to submit against fluoridation. This is the uh, New Zealand Parliament uh, website where we can go and submit. Uh, today's date is the uh, 10th of June 2021. We've got about eight days to submit. I'm the author and publisher of this book, How Essential is Fluoride, which demonstrates that one of the claims or presuppositions consistently made over the last 70 years by advocates of fluoridation, the claim that fluoride is an essential nutrient, has been exaggerated. Uh, I should say the document that came out the other day from the Office of the Ch Prime Minister's Chief Science Advisor has said the opposite, has said that it's not a nutrient, which kind of goes uh, against what experts have been saying in media for about seven decades uh, but it's, it's actually consistent with the scientific literature so that's a good thing and this kind of discrepancy between uh, supporters of fluoridation's media statements with scientific statements is part of or a big part of what my book is about now a lot of people love the peer-reviewed literature and they always say well you should cite peer-reviewed stuff and uh, I do in this book uh, also, there are some things that you won't find in the peer-reviewed literature. For instance, investigation and discussion of media statements, uh, that's pretty sparse. Uh, thorough discussion of archived documents, that's almost uh, non-existent. Uh, arguments that advocates of fluoridation have avoided for many years and areas of fluoridation that advocates are ignorant of and biases and mistakes made by advocates of fluoridation. And in this short little video, I'll show you a couple of examples of these. On the 7th of October 2013, uh, Bob Brocky, the science columnist for the Dominion Post, uh, it's Wellington, New Zealand, uh, who supports fluoridation, uh, Bob Brocky does, uh, he wrote uh, that a big problem is that the anti-fluoride lobbyists have the propaganda field to themselves. No noisy organisation promotes fluorine or challenges the anti-fluoridationists. This is October 2013. Well, in 2012, uh, on the 11th of September, uh, PR Week reported that uh, the Centre for Disease Control uh, is awarding $12 million worth of contracts. And these contracts are for Washington-based PR firm Hager Sharp, who won the two multi-year contracts worth about $6.2 in total. And there's a bit there about the first contract. The CDC also awarded Hugger Sharp a two-year contract to support communication and education efforts for oral health issues, including community water fluoridation. So this is the Center for Disease Control in the USA spending millions of dollars on contracts for a professional public relations firm to promote community water fluoridation. And this is the uh, CDC and Hager Sharp, or sorry, this is the Capital Communicator website. There's a lot of PR news on this website. So this is totally the opposite of what uh, Bob Brocky is saying. And I should add here, I like Bob Brocky's columns on you know, evolution and archaeology. He's um, a, good, a good writer on that sort of field. But uh, on fluoridation, the, the really interesting thing here is that there was no correction. There was no... You know, no one else in the media knew that the CDC had spent, you know, millions of dollars promoting this public relations thing. So this this little statement here uh, is totally untrue, and it gets out with no word. No one says anything about it except people like me, who you're, you know, if you're into the peer-reviewed mainstream literature, you're sort of perfectly justified to ignore people like me because I'm not a professional scientist and all that sort of thing, uh, even though I can verify what I'm saying. Well, on the 13th of October 2013, um, that's almost a week after Bob Brocky's column, the Waikato Times, this is New Zealand, uh, wrote that according to Craig Climo of the District Health Board, the DHB spent 47000 on its pro-fluoride campaign, 8000 of that on billboards and banners. This is in New Zealand. So maybe we can be kind of forgiving for the uh, Dominion Post and for Bob Brocky not knowing that the American Center for Disease Control spent millions of dollars promoting fluoridation, but for them to not know or for them to not say anything, you know, a week after uh, Bob Brocky's column is kind of amazing. This is taxpayer money, $47,000 taxpayer money. 
On the 10th of October 2013, the Waikato Times reported Fluoride Free Hamilton spokesperson Pat McNair said the group had spent a few thousand dollars. That's a few thousand of their own money. Now, think for a second, who is Bob Rocky's audience? They're the clever people, the scientific people. And when these, these two statements are made on the 13th, um, a week after, and on the 10th, a few days after, there's no correction in the paper, there's no discussion, there's no nothing. Uh, maybe there's the occasional, you know, letter to an editor. Uh, I think I just went through that. Uh, New Zealand Archives, uh, this is the Archives website, Archway dot or whatever it is there you go so if you if you do a simple search for fluoridation you can get 317 records for fluoridation that's what they look like some of these are really thick like over an inch uh piles of paper you know hundreds and hundreds of little bits of paper letters and so on uh some of these are really thin you know might only be a handful of newspaper clippings Here's one little document I want to show you. It's about seven or eight pages. I don't know, maybe yeah, seven or eight pages long. Uh, this is a document written in 1959 about the Masterton referendum. Now, this is page six. A lot of interesting stuff in here. Um, it's a bit of a journey through history. But I want to share with you page 6.3d. This is one of, one of the most amazing things I found, I think. Uh, all... Although we'll consider it most unlikely that fluoride tablets could give the same benefits as fluoridated water, it is essential for the persuasion of the layman that we try to obtain some figures to demonstrate this. Quite an incredible little sentence there. Uh, it tells us that the uh, this is written by the you know the Ministry of Health in the 1950s. Um, no, no bad feelings towards the. Ministry of Health on, on my part nowadays I've got friends and loved ones in Ministry of Health and so on so you know that sort of thing no <laughs> uh, I don't want to damn anybody or anything or you know foment any any uh, any hatred or anything but this this tells us that the people back in the 1950s were so willing to to sort of lie to get what they thought was a good thing and I'm sure they they did honestly think it was a good thing in some ways but this sort of suggests that they didn't think the tablets were all that good but they're still willing to tell us that they are quite quite incredible really this is one of the few examples I have of a total willingness to lie I, I think there's a lot of bias and a lot of favoritism and double standards in fluoridation but I'm quite careful about saying people lie uh, I think I've only found maybe two or three examples, maybe, yeah, maybe three examples of, of people lying outright. Uh, well, that's where you can definitely say it's lying. Okay, in 2016, August 2016, uh, there were a few complaints about some ads made by Fluoride Free New Zealand. They're an activist group opposing fluoridation. This example is from my book, How Essential is Fluoride, Chapter 5.4. Radio New Zealand interviewed Peter Griffin from the Science Media Centre. Griffin said he attended Professor Paul Connett's talk in Petonia, Wellington. Uh, Paul Connett opposes fluoridation, if you didn't know. He told interviewer Jesse Mulligan, uh, Peter Griffin told interviewer Jesse Mulligan, that there were no scientists present. However, in this comment, it is obvious that he was discussing the audience. In this interview, and in an interview two months later, Radio New Zealand did state that Paul Connett was a retired chemistry professor. Quoting Mr Griffin, There was just Paul, there were no scientists there. There was no discussion on how he claimed to know this, but that's not really the main point I want to make. The main point I want to make is that uh, it's best shown by this this piece, uh, Fluoridation Strategies for Success by Robert Eisman in the American Journal of Public Health in 1981. And he says, in summary, the real key to success in small towns is to identify the power source of the community. I should add, he's he's talking about how to promote fluoridation and how to get small towns to accept fluoridation. Influential citizens are not always obvious. They may be in any occupation and not necessarily in any in city government. They may be the owner of a florist shop or water plant operator. If the campaign leaders can find the power source and convince them of the merits of fluoridation, the election will be won. Now there is no discussion whatsoever in this article about uh, ensuring that the uh, that the power sources of the community uh, know anything about 
science or are scientifically educated or any of that sort of thing. So here's a pretty big kind of double standard. Uh, it's not okay to oppose fluoridation if you're uneducated or it's not, it's not okay to go along to, you know, Paul Connett's talk if you're not a scientist, that's cause for concern. But if you're not a scientist and you're promoting fluoridation, that's just fine. And I think that's why people who promote fluoridation find it, a lot of people just promote it passively. Like they just say, oh, my dentist says it's good or whatever. Uh, they don't have to think too hard about it because there's, you know, other people doing the thinking. Well, uh, many of us have submitted before and I want to share something from Hans Mullinsberg's book uh, because the uh, uh, the the cost of freedom is eternal vigilance and Mullenberg understood this uh, he wrote we had stemmed the tide for the time being but only just for here is the crazy thing although the proponents knew that they were not popular that the population did not want fluoridation they came back again and again and again they did not know the meaning of the word stop so we've got to tell them again the meaning of the word stop and here's where you can do it uh, what is, what is that like HTTP uh, yeah, inquire into supplementary order paper number 38 in the fluoridation amendment bill uh, thank you for watching and if you found this content rewarding or interesting or whatever like subscribe share blah 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 uh, feel free to contact me on the Facebook page if you have any questions or concerns or anything like that or want to share any research or bounce any ideas around thank you very much